In most of our videos, you see me in my office, sometimes in the lab. We're looking at molecules, usually quite small ones or elements, how they react, what happens. Now, it's a bit different today. We're in a field, surrounded by yellow flowers. These are flowers that have been grown as a crop to make oil. It's called oilseed rape. So what do I as a chemist see when I look at these flowers and plants? I see they're yellow. I have no idea why they're yellow, but obviously it's quite a complicated organic compound. And I see the leaves, which are green. I know that those are due to chlorophyll. That's a compound of magnesium. Again, it's really quite complicated. It's enough chlorophyll in the leaf to capture the energy of the sun and use that to split up water into hydrogen and oxygen and react the hydrogen with the carbon dioxide in the air to make organic compounds. I'm here because I'm interested in taking this carbon dioxide that the plant has captured and thinking how could we use those chemicals that are in the plant to turn them into something that's useful that I as a chemist could use at the lab or could be used in chemical manufacture to make things that are useful for us. Sometimes chemicals are used from plants already. Sugar is used, various different sorts of sugars. They're fermented to make alcohol, either to drink or sometimes to be used industrially. In fact, you can make alcohol without ever going near a plant. The difference between alcohol that you get in a plant and the one that you get from a chemical factory is the one in the plant is slightly radioactive because there's radioactive carbon in the air. And in fact, in America, you can't sell wine or beer if it's not radioactive because it means it's got industrial alcohol in it and not alcohol from plants. What we want as chemists is to use more of the plant, not just a few seeds or a bit of sugar. It's a huge problem how to do this. So what we've got to do is get a lot of chemists working together. And I and my colleague here in Nottingham, Simon Woodward, are part of a network of chemists all around Europe who are working together to think what are the best ways that we can start unlocking these chemicals? And we've started a network called UBIOCHEM, Utilising Biomass, Biomass means plants, Utilising Biomass for Chemicals, so that we can try and coordinate our research, so everybody's work interlinks together. The thing that chemists want to do is really to do with plants what they do with oil. At the moment, with oil, petroleum, it comes out of the ground and goes into a refinery. And the refinery makes lots of different products, makes transport fuel, it makes chemicals. So chemists have come up with the idea of a biorefinery, where a plant goes in and out of this biorefinery comes lots of different products. Some which can be used for making chemicals, some which may, products may actually be energy for making heat, for making electricity, and some of it will be fuels. So to replace some of the oil that we use at the moment for transport. People, quite a lot of people ask, are really plants the way forward to make chemicals? And the answer is that the only source of carbon that we're sure that we're going to have in the unlimited future is carbon dioxide. At the moment, plants are by far the best way of capturing carbon dioxide from the air. In the future, I'm sure that chemists will discover other ways of capturing carbon dioxide, but it's going to take a long time before you can capture as much carbon dioxide as you can in this field as simply as just by growing seeds in the ground and adding a little fertiliser. In the end, like many of these problems, we're going to need a combination of them. But there's a real chemical challenge, how to turn my plant into chemicals. 
And that's something which we need to start answering now.